is not Sam Wrestling. Introducing your host from New York, here is Sam Roberts. Well, look who's back here in the Not Sam studio on Not Sam Wrestling. Yeah. It's the one and only uh, WWE's Kathy Kelly. Hello. What's the haps? Um, Not much. I'm very uh, excited to be back here. Yeah, are you? Nothing's changed. What do you mean nothing's changed? The couch from over there used to be over here. Oh, wow. Okay. Everything's changed. It's yeah, a totally right. different world. Feng shui. Yeah, exactly. Some of the figures probably moved around a little bit, or we don't touch those. No, no, there was a huge move. They went from that side to that side. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that's why it's not all that organized over there. But the uh, custom-made Sam Roberts is uh, right over there in the ring. But look, that's neither here nor there. No. That, that has nothing to do with anything. You're right. Compared to... Everything going on in your life, <laughs> not much here has changed. It's all kind of the same. This is the where you come. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Right, right. Your life, it changes, it evolves. You get new responsibilities. You get bigger, you get bigger. And then you come over here and it's exactly as you left it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I am exactly as you left me. The dog still misses me. The dog, Yeah, the dog is exactly the same. Everything is the same here and it always will be. But not for you. It mm. feels like... Uh, it feels like every time I turn around, you get something else going on. You officially, and we, I don't re, I don't know if we've ever talked about it on the air. What? But I'm you, excited to hear what I did. <laughs> well, I mean, realistically, when you went to WWE, mm -hmm. like one of your, one part of this being your dream was to get a cooking show on the WWE <laughs> Network, right? Yeah. And so like, we go, okay, uh, SmackDown <laughs> becomes a thing. And I go, well, yeah, I mean, it's on YouTube. It's not technically on WWE Network, but this is it. Yeah. And then they go, oh, by the way, that thing we did, we're going to put it on WWE Network. I know. So it's like mission completed. Yeah, I found out that uh, Talking Snack was going on the network from a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the greatest tweet ever. I know. I was really excited. And are you sitting there uh, competitively uh, finding out what the numbers are as compared to uh, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins by Toys? Um. No. I would be. Well. Oh. I'm sure it's doing much, much better. <laughs> um, well, what's been going on? I mean, what's 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 life been like as of late? You're traveling like yeah. way more than ever. Traveling a lot more, which is what I wanted. Um, doing a lot more digital stuff uh, with more leeway, which is really cool. Doing a lot more long form interviews, which I've been loving. You know that that's like my passion. With yeah. Everything. Um, and then I feel like everything's just been growing and getting better. What's well, really cool, you being the kind of uh, linchpin of WWE Digital, I feel like, and you kind of grew into that role because when you first started at WWE, the assumption was like, oh, okay, I'll just do some YouTube videos because it wasn't that much of a thing. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, I guess the path is do some YouTube videos, then go to NXT, then go to SmackDown, then go to Raw, then go to Paper. Like, what, you know what I mean? It was like, what's this path and they were like oh no 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 like it's gonna be something totally different and you grew along with the entire digital platform yeah to the point where you've built an audience that's enormous and you've done these huge events that before you were in the position that you're in weren't happening yeah so it wasn't like there was this set of uh, uh blueprints for you to follow and get to this place it was like no now that we have Kathy pave your own path yeah we're yeah. going to we're going to build out this digital i mean i made a joke to my boss the other day that uh when i started WWE's YouTube was at uh, around 8 million and now it's at 43 million and there's only one thing that has changed. Yeah, I guess that leaves you responsible for, by my calculations, 120 million? Is None that, of it. Is that, oh, oh. <laughs> but I mean, it's got to be pretty cool Maybe to go. Maybe like my mom subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> but that is one of those things I feel like, you know, in especially in entertainment yeah. where you come on board, you expect something, it turns out to be different, but usually they pitch you on all this stuff that like well you know we're not going to do this but trust me digital is going to be so much bigger and we're going to do all kinds of stuff and we're going to send you on the road and in most spots that just never happens mm -hmm. right and they you're just kind of there and then all of a sudden here it happens yeah i mean like you know what i went through to get to where we are now um 
but like the first year was really hard and like difficult to navigate for me um being in wwe and now i'm at a place where i'm really happy career wise and i'm happy personally um so i feel like it all kind of came together and that's the best place to create content is when like you're happy and you're excited to do and confident. Things. Yeah. Like you're not sitting there questioning, what am I doing here? Yeah. You actually kind I of, mean, they probably get a little annoyed with me cause I'm just constantly pitching new things. I'm like, <laughs> Hey, let's do a podcast. Let's do this. Let's do that. And, and it's we're like, like, Kathy, we've given you stuff. <laughs> it's been years now. Stop. Well, pitching. <laughs> no, it's not even that. A lot of the things I think will happen eventually. It's mm-hmm. just the, uh, the whole digital brand has grown so much, especially in the three years that I've been there where I, like they don't even have enough space in their office right now like um so you are so- also responsible for the fact that they're leaving titan tower <laughs> yes because you heard it here now i've got a bone to pick with that i've been looking at that building for 20 years driving up and down 95 no i think that like- they were like we need kathy kathy keeps pitching stuff we're gonna have to move so that we have room for all of our Kathy projects. Well, it's just, it's such a good problem to have that a lot of the, the original shows, and not even my shows, um, a lot of the um, the projects that they've built out have been so good and so successful that they've started putting them on the network as well. Um, where yeah. they've gotten so many views that then we can go off and create more projects because of the money that's coming in. So, um, you know, there are more editors and um, producers and everyone else under the digital umbrella and i think that's only growing what's been your favorite thing other than you know getting your baby talking talking snack my baby your baby <laughs> what's been your favorite it took more than nine months to birth <laughs> <laughs> it did it did well yeah it was uh, it wanted to stay inside it yeah. wanted to stay in and <laughs> but still, once it came out it was beautiful a bun in the oven <laughs> right 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 exactly I'm glad the puns haven't stopped. I'm not pregnant. Um, (laughs) I don't know if any of these Twitter wrestling websites want to pick it up. I feel like you were hinting at something. Um, What's been your favorite thing? Not necessarily individual thing, but your favorite role that you now play that wasn't necessarily a role to be played when you first got to WWE? Um, I mean, like I mentioned just a little bit ago, I love doing the long form interviews and we, we do like... Uh, before the big four pay-per-views, um, we've been just building out that entire week, the week before, and creating content. Um, and a lot of that is um, long-form sit-down interviews. And those are um, live, right? Yeah. Uh, so we did one with uh, Becky Lynch that was live to tape. Um, and then we did one with Seth Rollins. Um, and they're, you know, 45-minute not cut. Um, like... That's really cool to me. It's unheard of. Um, and it, yeah, like I, I, I've never in WWE, like even when they do special longer form interviews, first of all, they're not 45 minutes, but secondly, like they're edited. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're, they're presented in a certain way. It's really rare that there's ever been that sort of conversational thing. And I, I, I'm, I love that it feels like fans are really reacting to it. And WWE is seeing like, okay, tastes are changing. And as much as you would think that internet culture has put attention spans in a place where it has to be every five seconds something new, the reality is people sit in front of YouTube and Twitter for hours to watch stuff. Well, that was the, um, I guess the hurdle in getting these off the ground was, um, you know, so much of the analytics are people are only watching YouTube for 90 seconds. Mm -hmm. And to have something like that, that's a 45 minute long interview or some of the round tables, which went over an hour, for the fans and they're tuning in and watching it in its entirety Mm -hmm. is unheard of but also really cool yeah so is there a lot of pressure on you uh when you're doing those especially the live interviews that are long form knowing that the the people that you're trying to appease you know the people that are hiring you to do this are used to that quick style and or do you not do you try not to even think about any of that and just go i'm just gonna have an interview like I normally would. I think it's just having an interview. It's having a conversation about um, things that everyone who's been on the panels has been super passionate about. And when people are excited about what they're talking about, I think it just, it becomes enjoyable. Right. And you can kind of feel in the moment, you're like, if I'm enjoying this, people at home are probably enjoying this. Yeah. And everybody's 
I'm also the most critical of my own stuff. Are so you? Like, do you watch it back? <laughs> I'll like give myself grades on interviews. Just <laughs> what did you give dirty. yourself on the Becky Lynch interview? <laughs> oh, that was an A. Oh wow. Okay, yeah, yeah super critical. Yeah, it's got more. Must be tough. Must keep you up at night. Yeah, A. Not the A plus, huh? Whoa, <laughs> that's really a lot of self doubt. No. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had? What's the worst? I won't even ask you. I mean, you could tell me what interview it is. What's the worst grade that you've given yourself? Have you given yourself any Fs? Um, I mean, years ago, yeah. But not Probably like... before I started WWE. Right, everything's... A lot of Fs. Everything's at least been passing. Yeah. In the last couple years. Yeah. Yeah. What's the lowest that you'll give yourself now, would you feel like? Maybe like a B minus. So you're not self-critical. Well, no. B minus is like, if I when I was in high school, if I got a B minus... B minus is horrible. No, my parents were like, I don't know how you pull this off, Sam, but we're not going to ask any questions. A's. Every single one has to be the best per, or the person's best interview they've ever done. That's what oh, I want. really? That's what I want. I, yeah. don't, I don't think it's there yet, but that's uh-huh. what I, that's my goal. That that's would be you, an A plus. You str- so, well, then do you look back on all stuff that you've done and go like, I thought this was a B minus, but I sucked back then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> yeah. I mean, if you think it's rough watching stuff you're doing now... Yes. So in 10 years, I'll probably be like, wow, I was yeah. really, You're really watching, bad. Yeah, this interview. <laughs> Just terrible. Go, the nerve of me to think <laughs> that any of this was worth anything. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I can't watch anything that I do or listen to anything that I do unless it's specifically for specific edit points or I'll watch for, you know, 45 seconds just to kind of feel the vibe of yeah. it. And if the vibe feels like oh, this feels like something that would be on TV, I turn it off before I find myself doing something that I will 100% give myself an F for. (laughs) Yeah. You know? I mean, there's definitely been times, like, that I've been watching content that I've done or created, and I know that they're going to put it up because I don't have any say over (laughs) what's uh, in the can, Um, and just be like, oh, that's so awful. I hope that no one watches this. But is there a freedom in the fact that you're not responsible for the final edit, meaning you don't have the option of sitting there and going through it with a fine tooth comb? So you kind of just have to learn to just let go. Uh, I I do that with some things, but um, I think that I'm just a person that likes to be in control of everything in their life. Yeah. And uh, yeah, letting go of that a little bit is difficult for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it is it is easier. I yeah. mean, that's that's the best part about. That's why this I never do edits on the podcast. That's why, and I think it's just because I did live. I've done live radio for so long, because you could just do a show and then it doesn't matter after. Like you yeah. just leave it there because you go and do the next one tomorrow. Yeah, and just push forward, push forward, push forward. I couldn't if I started sitting down and it was like you're responsible for the edit too. I'd only ever get one thing done in my entire life. Like yeah. we would just keep going back and going back and going back. I mean, I think years ago, prior to WWE, I stopped myself from doing a lot of stuff because I was so scared about what other people would think or scared that it wouldn't be up to my standard of good. Like you didn't think you could do it well. Yeah. So you're like, I'm not ready for this. Or I was so critical of like the content that I was creating or putting out um, that I didn't want it to. I don't want to do bad, so I'm not going to do. the universe, yeah. Yeah. Do you so you don't have that in you anymore so much? You're a lot more willing to tr- just try and oh, just yeah, see. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I think that's the other thing too. I'm sure I would imagine in your position in WWE, you've been thrown into so many last minute situations and circumstances that you must develop this thinking and confidence is really what it is that whatever you're going to get thrown at you, you're going to be able to handle it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What's been an instance where you go like, okay, this was a learning experience. I really can handle whatever gets thrown my way. Um, can you move your phone on the floor or something? That's oh, what that sorry. sound is. That's, I, I mean, you're busy. That, I don't know that I can think of anything off the top of my head. Um, I mean, things that have been somewhat challenging um, recently were we were doing red carpets for a little bit mm-hmm. um, under the WW umbrella and going into a Kids' Choice Awards or something like that where... Um, you know, not everyone is completely familiar with the product Mm -hmm. (laughs) and answering questions about uh, WWE superstars. uh, Trying to create a package out of that is a little challenging. Right. But uh, I I don't know. Like, I think that everything, um, you know, you adjust and uh, you learn from it. You just keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like better uh, taped or live? Um, I like both for different reasons. What are the reasons? Um, I like live because 
Um, you know, you can't go back and be critical or I mean, you can't go back. You can definitely go back and be critical, but there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. And so it's completely out of your control. Um, and then I like tape stuff because, uh, you know, you just, it creates a really cool product. Yeah. Yeah. Outcome. So you're doing the long form interviews really just for the big four right now. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that that'll change moving forward. Um, that you'll do more of them, you think? We'll do more of them, yeah. Um, I'd like to think so. Yeah. Um, I like to think that Talking Snack will come back for a second season. <laughs> I like to think that, uh, you know, we're just expanding under the digital brand and we'll have a lot more shows, um, like discussion shows um, and other content, which will be great. And you're hosting live a lot, too. Like, not, like, live uh, to broadcast, but it seems like you're doing a lot of live panels and things like that. Yeah, we're, um, I mean, we don't really call them panels, but the the WWE Now lives before... uh, No, I mean, the, like, uh, 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 like, uh, Comic Cons and and South South by Southwest Southwest. and stuff like that. I mean, those have just been kind of thrown at me, and those have been so much fun. Really? Yeah. So it's just like, hey, we're going to go do this, and you just jump up and kind of throw, introduce everybody, moderate do well, the deal I mean those are those are the events that like I looked up to when I was younger like right. I remember like seeing Comic Con or whatever it is like and wanting to go um, and now like hosting a panel um, which was probably my biggest fear when I was a kid of speaking, speaking publicly in front publicly. of an audience yeah <laughs> um, and getting to do that and um, yeah like I feel uh, I don't know that lucky is the right word but really grateful yeah um, fortunate for those opportunities yeah i like the word fortunate yeah yeah now do you still have that public speaking fear um because like and i asked because i mean like it was debilitating when I I was see. A child. <laughs> yeah. so not to the same extent you know how you can tell it's better because i do it yeah <laughs> no i was just watching this video uh that wwe put out as a matter of fact of yeah. xbox uh week at the performance center and he was going out in front of a crowd at one of like the Florida NXT shows. So it's, yeah. you know, a few hundred people in the audience. And he's like talking to camera right before he goes out and he goes, I don't know if anybody knows this, but I am terrified of speaking in public. Aww. And I'm like, what? Like <laughs> X-Pac, like promo after WrestleMania 14, like bish off this, but like still afraid of speaking in public. And he is, I mean, he goes up there and he's he just, the best. he crushes it, but that's his, that's his truth. He's still... He's still afraid of it. I call him Uncle Sean. <laughs> <laughs> he really is amazing. Do you, but so you don't, do you get, to what level is your fear of public speaking now? Now, um, I mean, I'll get a little bit nervous, but I'll recognize that the, the nerves are more excitement than fear. Right. Um, yeah. When did you get over your debilitating fear of public speaking? <laughs> Yesterday. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I think that you, I just kind of like, uh, was less and less scared every time right so you just start you just force yourself to do it yeah like i remember uh in high school uh we performed in front of like the school assembly um i was playing bass guitar at the time uh and we had to <laughs> like for like, real playing like ba- a, in a band yeah we like oh. uh performed in front of the entire school um which is three thousand kids and just being so scared that I could barely move my fingers which when you're playing <laughs> bass guitar is like okay. so, not not uh optimal yeah yeah <laughs> so so the first key to getting over your public speaking was figure out how to move your fingers in public yeah that was before you could move your mouth yeah and sound could come like out like walking out to the stage and not right okay that was the yeah. first step yeah. what were you playing like I know you're playing bass but what songs were you playing god I don't even remember what type of music um couldn't tell you you don't know I'm what you were playing? Blacked out, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know that I remembered what I was playing when I was playing it. Right. At the time, you probably didn't give yourself an F, but realistically. No, I definitely would have given myself you did. an F. Yeah. Oh, okay. So why didn't you keep up with bass guitar? Um, I did for a little bit. Actually, um, it's kind of funny because, so I, I really wanted to be in a band for a really long time. Um, and then when I was in high school, um, I was, I mean, we had like a girl band, it was three of us, and we played a couple shows, and then I realized... Was it inspired by Josie and the Pussycats? No. Okay, well, that was a good movie at the time, <laughs> so... It was inspired by Fall Out Boy and a lot of other emo bands oh. in Chicago, um, 
But yeah, wanted to be in a band. And then one day, so I also joined our high school's news program where we did a live uh, news show every week on our local affiliate. And um, one of my uh, assignments was to cover the Battle of the Bands at our high school. And so I did a package on it and I loved it. And that's kind of how I got into hosting. So you're like, I'm in this ridiculous Battle of the Bands stuff. I don't need to be in this battle. I'm yeah. going to put this package together and just report on these other sh Screw schmucks. Boards, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these jamokes playing bass guitar. I'll just talk about yeah. them. Yeah. But you see, that's like the wild thing to me. And I think that it's more common than people realize is that like on one end you are debilitatingly petrified yeah and when i say petrified i mean in the literal sense like petrified means that it turns into a rock and it can't move you are petrified to speak in public but what you <laughs> want to do with your life is speak to an audience yeah and i think maybe at the time it was a little bit easier for me since i was so introverted to um you know put something into uh, a space where people could see it but I was in charge of editing it and filming it and just had to learn right. how to talk to one camera as opposed to thousands of people yeah and there is a thing where when you're putting the whole thing together you can kind of retreat into the project and it's not so like the audience is this thing that happens somewhere over here but you're in your own little world of just putting all these puzzle pieces together so the part of you talking into a camera I mean, this is how it works in my head. It just becomes one element and you almost separate yourself from it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Like, like you almost separate yourself from the fact that you're talking into this camera because you're thinking about the story you're telling and where this is going to be edited in here and I'm going to put voiceover over there. Yeah. So it becomes a little bit easier because you're not thinking about it so much as public speaking. Yeah. Do you miss that part of it like the editing part of it so video editing was really therapeutic for me like mm -hmm. i could uh, i could get lost in like editing a project um especially when i was in high school and like learning how to do it um and then i did it a lot more in college um i remember actually in one of the news classes that uh I was in, our teacher didn't know anything about video editing, which was a major portion of the class. So <laughs> I was teaching the 20 students oh. how to edit on Avid. Um, <laughs> now, did you did you push yourself for this position or did the teacher just go like, oh, you know this? Oh, could you tell them? I think it was, she was struggling to explain what it was. And so I just kind of did it for everyone. Right. Well, um, you've always been an Avid learner. I beat you to it. Go on. I'm proud. <laughs> I'm not laughing <laughs> with you. <laughs> I think you are. Um, but so, yeah, so, you, so, so, but, so when did you fall off of that, uh, or, or when did that become less of a priority for you? Um, I mean, I don't think that it's ever become less of a priority. It's just that Will you editing video things. right now? Um, I mean, I edit little movies on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the same thing as working on an app. I know. Um, no, I think that, uh, honestly, I would say what stopped me from editing stuff more so was that I got a new computer and I didn't have all of the editing software. <laughs> I just don't know where it went. So, um, yeah, that, right, that so definitely uh, hindered. Getting software, never your strong suit. But once the software is there... <laughs> you can really utilize it yeah okay totally. no that makes total sense yeah i mean that's a, video editing is one of those skills where like you learn it mm -hmm. but technology is moving so quickly that like you knew how to do it a couple years ago i don't think that it's ever gonna like it's just like riding a bike no because i yeah. look at it and i go like i know how to edit video like crazy i've yeah. been editing video for years and i can still edit video the way i edit video but then Hot Dog will send me something Didn't like I animated. Did I used to edit video for you? For yeah. Not Sam's YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. But then Hot Dog will send me something with all these crazy animations on it. And I go, how the hell do you do that? Oh, yeah. What are well, you? That's, that's a separate program. What are you in? Like Steven Spielberg? And he's like, no, dude, it's, it's really easy to do. Yeah. But that's I mean, what I mean. Like like the technology. Those are the things, though, that like a teenager could watch one YouTube video right. and figure it out. Right. But we're old. Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Deal with it. Um... <laughs> this is going to be a really interesting podcast on video editing. I know, right? <laughs> I'm sure people really enjoy this one. <laughs> well, you know, people, I mean, the, the journey is part of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, what are you doing now when you're not, you're on the road uh, pay-per-view weekends, right? Pay-per-view weekends and usually about one other. Um, oh, so weekend, it's like. Uh, or 
Monday, Tuesday. It ends up being yeah. a couple times a, a month. month. Yeah. Oh, so that's pretty regularly. Yeah, going down to NXTs too. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah. And you enjoy that? You like to travel? Um, yeah, I love to travel, but I think it's more um, the work, enjoying the work that we're doing. So right, right, yeah, yeah. I mean, I hate to travel, but work like the do, getting to do fun stuff all the time is the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Um, do you still? How do you do? You still have like specific goals in terms of you know, I want to do this. This is something I want to accomplish while I'm here. Or have you gotten to the point where you're like, my goal is to just get better and better and see where this thing goes? Um, I definitely have goals. Um, I don't know that I have like specific, um, goals of like times that I have to meet certain things. Like yeah. I would love to do a podcast or do, um, you're doing one but... right now. Congratulations. <laughs> my own podcast. Oh. I would love to have my own, oh. um, I would love to, like, doing the long-form interviews that we've done a few of, I would love to do a weekly version of that. Um, I would love to do more Talking Snack. I would love, um, I have no idea what the, the upcoming Fox Sports 1 show uh, is going to be, but I would love to be involved with that. Yeah. Um, I think, um, you know, being here or being with WWE was oh, I thought you meant here so long. in the Nazi studio. Uh, that was congratulations. Never goal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, and recently, I would say, like within the last year, um, I was getting frustrated with not hitting certain goals um, by a certain time for myself. And so I kind of shifted my mindset to um, my goal has always been to um, be a role model be the the type of person and have the type of career that I always wanted um and I think that I am hitting those goals every day so um happy with where I'm at but also not content with staying there if that makes sense it makes complete sense yeah yeah you're like I, I'm I, you're satisfied in the moment but that doesn't mean that you're finished yeah right like you're happy with where you're at yeah and I, I guess you know you always wonder how people are going to put up with like when you when you set a goal there are so many people that get stopped because they complete it early you know what i mean like the goal comes early they don't really have to work that hard or as hard as they thought for it and yeah. it gets presented to them and at the time it's like oh my god this is the greatest thing ever but most of the time when that happens you get to this place where people fall off because they got nothing else going yeah. on, you know what I mean? And the the people that actually do achieve crazy dreams are the ones that weren't handed everything or had to work really hard for everything. Right. Sometimes invisibly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like nobody will really kind of figure out exactly what the what the journey was the entire time. Or no one was or paying attention. Been. Right, yeah. No <laughs> the, the thing yeah. is like, the, it could be all right there and just no one was paying attention. And then finally one day. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I always go back to those, the quotes about... Uh, it taking 12 years to become an overnight success totally. or the 10,000 hours yeah. Malcolm Gladwell yeah yeah now does that does good stuff happening right you ending up in WWE or your shows like you 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 know the travel all the stuff that's been going well does it give you uh security in the sense that you go I don't need to be so anxious about what's going on because stuff happens like you just do good consistently and you do a lot of it and good stuff just happens what i don't know the question meaning like when good stuff hasn't happened yeah you start going like i know maybe i'm speaking for myself yeah where you go this is never gonna happen you know what i mean and you like the, that anxiety of oh my god like how am i gonna pull this off like this is what i want to do and it's just not happening and it's just not happening when stuff starts to happen and you still want more yeah it's a little the more I feel like becomes a little bit more realistic in your head because you say to yourself, I don't need to worry about making sure that this happens today because good stuff happens when you keep working. I, I definitely think that I have in the past had anxiety about that stuff. Um, like I used to have a lot of anxiety about time and like hitting certain goals on a certain timeline. 
Um, and now I don't think I do as much. Mm -hmm. Um, like I know every single day, like I'm still moving forward. Right. Um, even like failures or things that don't work out. You don't haven't had any. I'm still moving forward. You haven't had any failures. (laughs) You haven't gone below a B minus. Not in my book. (laughs) (laughs) No, but like when things don't work out exactly how you want them to, um, that that's like, you're still moving in the right direction Mm -hmm. and it'll present itself in time as to why that didn't work out that way. Now I noticed on Twitter, you're a big fan of the, uh, uh, firefly family, firefly, firefly (laughs) funhouse. Say that five times. Yeah. yeah, I can't even get out. What you're a huge fan of this. I love it. Of What's going on with Bray Wyatt right now. I do too. I'm, 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 I'm thrilled about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's so weird and bizarre especially on Monday when he starts like going like sociopath is the word of the day. And I go, okay, we're getting into All it now. All of the children who are watching. Yeah. I was literally like, I saw a tweet from somebody that goes like, Hey, my daughter was watching Naomi and now she knows what a sociopath is. <laughs> I like, just hope the kids go around like, uh, you know, kindergartner goes into school and <laughs> goes up to their teacher you're a sociopath <laughs> Look, and then spells it out <laughs> i'm gonna tell you something if there's a kindergartner that knows that understands the word sociopath and can spell it that would be called an advanced student that's yeah. a good thing you know what else do you like right now that's going on in wwe what what gets you excited that you go like yeah i work for this company um bobby Roode's mustache <laughs> <laughs> robert Roode, excuse robert. me oh yeah that's um, the other thing i i read correct me if i'm wrong that you did pitch Doing an expose on Robert Roode's mustache, is that yeah. right? <laughs> um, I would love to do like a Dateline episode <laughs> behind why he has the mustache. Right. Now. Yeah. now, are you thinking like, okay, we'd frame this where we'd interview Robert Roode, but we'd just frame the mustache? Um, no, I, I would think we would ask him, like we would do a sit down interview with him, mm-hmm. very stylized, mm-hmm. um, you know, the lighting, very like moody, mm-hmm. um, maybe get like a couple uh, very slow-mo uh, black and white black and white shots of uh, Mastro's backstage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The beard covers. <laughs> um, and, you know, then do a, a list of uh, the best mustaches that we have seen in WWE in the past. But you keep strictly to mustache talk. Yeah. I think that that's what the people would want, right? Uh, yeah. 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 I, I think that I think it's a good idea, and I feel Gotta like you... got to create that quality content for the people, Sam. <laughs> that's, it. Well, that's what it's all about at the end yeah. of the day, isn't it? It's the audience. And I don't think that one grows that mustache and presents it uh, in such a way without wanting to share it with the public. Yeah. So right now, your favorite things are the Fire Fun 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 House. Firefly Funhouse. Um, and Robert I would Roode's say, mustache. Honestly, so much of my favorite stuff happens in NXT. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. What's what's crazy to me about NXT right now is I think more than ever right now, they're just getting their talent rated on a regular basis. Like first they come in and they take that wave of EC three and Lars and Lacey and heavy machinery. And you're like, Oh, okay. And Alistair and Ricochet. Right, and then right huge, after that, yeah. Alistair and Ricochet are gone, and then yeah. uh, the Viking Raider experience is gone, <laughs> and and you know, and, and like literally, they're still the tag team champions, and they're on the main roster, yeah. and you go and and Ciampa goes out with an injury, and you think that you know because NXT does these takeovers where they're you only have room for four or five matches, and you end up seeing a lot of the same talent at takeovers because this is your cream of the crop talent these this is the talent that deserves to be at these takeovers you worry that oh my god with all these people leaving they're going to deplete nxt and then somehow it continuously comes back stronger yeah and you're like i because you i guess i i don't know i i honestly i haven't put my finger on how they do it i mean you 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 talk about someone's journey and like working silently for so long a lot of the the superstars at NXT they've been working like they've been at the performance center for two three years um sometimes longer uh and finally getting the opportunity to show what they're capable of on TV mm-hmm. you know the pe- lucky people in Florida who get to go to the live events get to see it every single weekend but there are so many people who have been working for so long um and then there's just a day when it clicks and yeah. then finally they get their opportunity um but i think overall like nxt is just such a special show mm-hmm. um you know how big of a fan i was of it prior to uh coming to wwe yeah. um and now i think it's like it's even cooler than it was 
three years ago. It's as good as it's ever been, yeah. which is a lot because, and I know that sounds like, you know, kind of company line-ish, but it's true. And and you can- You're s- a shill, so. Well, yeah, there's a t-shirt that says it. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm also apparently burying talent uh, <laughs> on, on various forms of um, commentary. Bianca Belair and- is one of my favorite human beings and I think one of the most talented people at NXT right now. That's great. Not- the most right yeah. not not the most if not the most oh i would say not the most talented person but i didn't say she wasn't talented mm. and i've never said anything about her as a person mm. she seems like a great person anyway i digress besides nobody's mad at me about bianca belair anymore they're all mad at me about dana brooke um <laughs> but regardless of all that um i mean you look at the takeovers and consistently every show it's either as good or better than the last one and i think the last like year and a half of takeover shows has been by far the best year and a half of takeover shows they've ever done yeah and you know and 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 again you go back and you're going like oh champa gets out is lost from the main event a week before takeover how is this gonna work exactly you go like okay they're allowed to have one dud right give them one strike they've had just show after show after show and then adam cole it's like hold my beer (laughs) <laughs> and like, and you go, oh my God, they did it again. Well, did you think that Undisputed Era wouldn't deliver? Of course they were. I, yeah. Of course I knew they were going to deliver. Uh, okay, so let's say Vince McMahon comes up to you and he goes, Kathy. Yeah. And you go, oh my God, yes, Vince. Uh, <laughs> I would be intimidated. And uh, he goes, what are my top two to three NXT recruits right now? Who should I be looking at to bring up to the main roster? Oh, like, wow. who, Who's the future of this company? You're there for all the TV tapings yeah. you're there you're as aware as anybody could be of the product um Velveteen Dream mm-hmm. Bianca Belair mm-hmm. um I get a third one yes okay and give me one that isn't uh isn't Adam a takeover Cole? regular yeah 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 <laughs> I was no, say no, no, that's, undisputed era yeah those, yeah. Are, those are my three right well, I mean, then that, I get like six I mean, that <laughs> you know, is, just undisputed era right but then I'll go no I know about those people I watched okay. Halftime Heat okay come on Kathy Tell me something I don't know. Uh, Candice LeRae. Okay. Casey Catanzaro. Okay. Do you want more? <laughs> no, I guess that's and just two. list yeah. everyone. You're the, yeah, you're like everybody is so <laughs> awesome over there. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's, uh, I think it's extraordinary what's happening. Um, who do you like on the main roster right now? Who do you like to watch in terms of matches, not in terms of facial hair and uh, children's television shows? Um. And if you say Ricochet and Alistair Black, I'm like, this that's the biggest cop out I've ever heard in my life. Because I just am trying to depart from NXT and you're like, these awesome guys from NXT are awesome on the main roster. Oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> Look, no. I'm not I wouldn't blame when when the uh Viking Raiders or or Alistair Black or Ricochet or any of those guys come out, I'm like, Oh my god, this is gonna be incredible. So yeah. I totally get it. But I mean like apart from your NXT people. Um, I mean, I you know how big a fan I was of the women main eventing this year's WrestleMania. Yeah, I know. Um, we did a watch along. You started uh, you started crying because <laughs> I had to be in a watch along with you for five. Oh, hours. is that what it was? <laughs> These are tears of sadness, actually. <laughs> and then just tears of joy getting to hang out with Pat McAfee. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I I genuinely like that was such an incredible moment. Yeah. Um, and something that I hope to tell my future children someday. Uh, being there and um working that specific WrestleMania. But uh, yeah, I think the women are so exciting right now. Like I, I don't know. Yeah. Like that's what I want to watch. So yeah. being a part of it is really cool. It's pretty remarkable. Yeah. You were crying like, uh, well, you were crying like uh, Sam Roberts in the Avengers uh, Endgame. Oh, did you cry? I got a little watery eye. I don't even care about Marvel, and I got a little watery yeah. eye. Did you see it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I had to wait. My mom was in town, so I had to wait until Sunday when she left. Oh, really? Because she was not going to sit through a three-hour-long movie that she knew nothing about, and then she would just probably ask me questions while the movie was happening. That's really convenient. (laughs) Mom, I've been waiting eleven years for this. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, no, it was a very emotional day, a huge roller coaster because I went to see Endgame Mm -hmm. um, right when she left, and then we had uh, the battle Battle of Winterfell. Oh, that was Sunday as well. Yes, yes. uh, yeah, I know what that was. That day, that was my first episode of Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, it's so funny because I was sitting with my friend the other day. Uh, we went to get uh, lunch on a Sunday, and um, she's like, "Oh, what are you doing later?" I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna go home, you know, 
get stuff prepared for tomorrow, watch Game of Thrones. She's like, oh, I'm going to watch Game of Thrones too. I didn't realize that she meant season one, episode <laughs> one. <laughs> She's going like... to start. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so bizarre to me. Yeah. No, but I mean, they do a good job on that show. I got swept up. I was like, oh man, this Aria chick is great. <laughs> I didn't know Aria? who she was. Is that how you pronounce that? Yeah. Oh, okay. I Area. Uh, area. <laughs> the area chick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've been watching all of the seasons, and there's still people that I don't know their names. I'm horrible at that stuff. Well, especially because those names are like, like out of a, a, you know mythology book or something. It's they're impossible. A George R. R. Martin book. Is that where they're from? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't blame you for not knowing those names. Like they're insane. What? Most of the Game of Thrones names. Yeah. They sound like just syllables thrown together. They're not real things. True. George R. R. Martin just was having a, having himself a time. Yeah. And decided to go for it. Well, what's next for you, Kathy? What's next for me? I'm getting on a plane uh, in a few hours mm-hmm. to go to NXT. Oh. Um, and then what do we have? We have uh, Money in the Bank coming up. We're doing another watch along, which I'm assuming you will be there for. I haven't been told about it, but oh. I'm assuming well, I'll I've been told about stroll it. <laughs> in and have stuff thrown at me or something. Yeah. yeah. Another cupcake to the face. Oh, yeah. See, yeah. I feel no sympathy for you about that. Why? Because I got a cupcake to the face during the first match of the show and I still had to go out there and be Who's in full hair makeup you? Uh, Big Show oh okay yeah well, what are you gonna say you know I mean <laughs> <laughs> Big Show threw a cupcake in your face he uh so I was going to eat a cupcake and he goes oh they smell weird then... <laughs> okay well you just had it like tapped I mean I had it literally smushed into I was cleaning icing out of my beard for a week well, and if that, you by had the way, a mustache, that wouldn't be a problem. You're right. You're right. That's what Robert Rude was thinking. He watched that watch long and he was like, I'm not going to get stuck in that position. Yeah. And by the way, pretzels the, in your hair. It's true. The watch along bef- before that, they were th- throwing things at me too. Food. These iconics are bad people and people don't understand that. I think they're great people. They are two of my favorite people to watch. That's that's my favorite part, I think, of uh, SmackDown and now Raw since they're on both. Well, they're the champions. Yeah. They yeah. don't win matches, but they're the champions. They did win a match. At WrestleMania? At WrestleMania, which yeah. is when it matters. Oh, okay. I didn't realize. Okay. All right. All right. You didn't realize? I didn't realize that was the only time it mattered. I knew that they won that match because they came in and to brag about winning the match, smushed a cupcake on my face. I remember. I was there. Who do you not hate? I don't hate anybody. Yeah. The internet seems to think otherwise. Well, the internet hates me, so that's on them. Perfect. You know, that's that's Feelings their mutual. That no, that's that's their issue, not my issue. I don't hate anybody. I just comment on what I see. You know, it's important. Yeah. Somebody's not all opinions to. are right. No, but mine usually are. Yeah. I, I well, you know what? This isn't about me, Kathy. This is about you. My opinion is that you're fantastic. Oh. Okay, well, that one's right. <laughs> <laughs> One for 23. <laughs> I knew I would you back. Well, Kathy, you're, uh, you've you succeeded. You know why? Why? Because you're my role model. Aww. I shape everything that I do after uh, after you. Uh, you're for me and young girls everywhere. You are our <laughs> role model, and we look up to you, and you're the person that we all wish that we had growing up. <laughs> <laughs> are you crying? I am. Oh. I am. This is, yeah. You're getting too Sorry, no. I just think about the Avengers again. <laughs> <laughs> it's really emotional. Um, well, where can they follow you on social? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Katherine Kelly and on Instagram at Kathy Kelly. You haven't fixed that yet, huh? Uh, I like to keep it inter- interesting. Interesting? Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. keep people on their toes. Keep the branding off kilter. Why not? <laughs> follow me on uh, WWE's YouTube. Yes, WWE's YouTube channel. It just keeps growing exponentially and exponentially. Um, And I I mean, that's how I keep up with you. I look forward to seeing what you're going to do next. Thank you for making the time, Kathy Kelly. (laughs) Of course. Thanks for having me. Why are you laughing at that? No reason.